if you didn't match uh, that is unfortunate there was soap we did have matches in soap as well but uh, i think it's a new month a new season it is very disappointing of course very frustrating if you don't match so the very first thing you should have done or should be doing right now is analyzing why you didn't match so it could be a meeting with your seniors your mentor your research mentor whosoever or even a profile review with us uh, you know whether it was lack of rotations whether it was step 3 whatever went wrong whether it was interview performance Hello everyone, welcome to USMLA Sarti. Welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to guide you on this match journey. I'm Shayla, the VP of Student Success, and with me is our chief mentor, Pawan Kira. Hi Pawan, how are you doing? Good, good, Shayla, and very excited to be here again this month and especially sharing uh, some of our match results and then of course for students who are going into the match uh, this season a plan for April. So, let's just dive in. Great. Yeah, sounds great. So just a reminder, we're doing a timeline series over all the months. So we've done January to March so far. So make sure to check those out. We talked about narrowing down your specialties, choosing your rotations, your research, start gathering your experiences. So we'll put a link to those videos. Make sure to check those out. Um, but yeah, like you said, we're already to April. So we're T minus six months to the application date. Um, so we better get started. <laughs> um, okay, so first, let's summarize 2020. Four match is officially over. So we have we've had a lot of our students that have matched this year, which is really exciting. We're really proud of all of their hard work. Um, so let's just talk about a little bit of the data. We'll go. We'll do another video, more of a deep dive on the NRMP data from this year. Um, but let's just summarize a little bit our students. Um, so what were kind of the highlights from our students this year? so one of the things was as always you know is match getting harder for visa requiring students so the answer is an overwhelming no in fact uh, more than 60% of our students uh, who matched required visa so uh, that in itself shows that yes it may be some specialty specific issues but if you build a profile then even with uh, you needing a visa match is certainly possible so 64% uh, students from sarthi who matched needed a visa uh, then the other uh, important thing we hear all the time is i'm an older yog can i match can i not match so on and so forth so uh, more than 1/5 so more than 20% of our students actually had a year of graduation of more than 10 years so they graduated 2013 or earlier so that is something that was very exciting for us um again they all worked hard built their profile uh more than half the student i think 57 58% actually had a yog of more than 3 years as well so that is also again if you i have a yog of more than 3 years it is not that you cannot match match is still possible And Sheila, remind me, what was the oldest YOG that we had this year? We had twenty-seven years YOG. Yeah, that was that, our oldest student. Yeah, that must have been some kind of a record. Twenty-seven-year-old YOG. Know. Yes, that <laughs> is impressive. Yes, absolutely. And we had a few. I think we had four that were over twenty years. So that's that's really awesome. Yep, yep, and of course, uh, you know, uh, our students uh, matched in all specialties. all img favored specialty plus uh, obgyn so uh, emergency medicine uh, we we are very excited about that uh, im fm peds neuro psych pathology of course all of them for the usual one but emergency medicine and obgyn this year additionally uh, many top programs matched at cook county yukon and many other universities as well uh i think one uh, last point we do want to highlight is about 1/4 which is 25% of our students actually had both their step scores step 1 and ck below 240 if they took step 1 as a score otherwise uh, the step 2 below 240 so again match is certainly possible you have to build a profile you have to work on your rotations research 
and and do the aggressive outreach but as these results show uh, you know difficult profiles can also match right yeah it's so exciting to see that because we talk to students every day that are so concerned oh no my score is below 230 what am i going to do um and yeah so it's great to show that you can still match There's plenty of things you can do um okay so match is over so what happens to those students who unfortunately didn't match this year what can they do now Okay. Yeah. Before I do that, I just want to remind everyone that uh, they can set up a time with us profile review with Shaila or I, and we'll go over your profile if you are going into the match uh, this uh, season. And maybe in, in the YouTube link, we'll, we'll put that link for you to set up time with us. If you're looking for rotations, again, we, you can set up time with our team to have one-on-one -on -one discussion again that link i think shala we can put uh, in the in the youtube uh, when the video goes live uh okay so now if you didn't match uh, uh, that is unfortunate there was soap we did have matches in soap as well but uh, i think it's a new month a new season it is very disappointing of course very frustrating if you don't match but uh, like she said, Shaila, uh, you know, it's less than six months, so you don't have much time to lose. So, uh, you know, pick yourself up and plan your next season or this season now, because each day will, man uh, will matter. So the very first thing you should have done or should be doing right now is analyzing why you didn't match. So it could be a meeting with your seniors, your mentor, your research mentor, whosoever, or even a profile review with us, uh, you know, whether it was lack of rotations, whether it was step three, whatever went wrong, whether it was interview performance, I think uh, it'll be a good time to assess and do some kind of a SWOT analysis of your profile. And, and then you can start building the profile. Great. Okay. So one thing that some students have not done is taken the exams yet. So do we still have time to take both step one and step two? What's the timeline? Yeah. So if uh, someone has still not taken step one, I, I think it's going to be a very aggressive timeline to be able to apply on time in September. Not saying it is impossible, but you should have done your step one by now. Maybe you can do it early April, probably and then spend the next uh, three to four months in on CK. Uh, step one is pass fail, but CK has score, a three digit score and score does matter. So if you feel you can do CK in three months, probably you can do it, but very aggressive. Remember you have to do US clinical experiences also. So a minimum of three and uh, some research possibly. So. If you have not taken both step, uh, if you have not even taken step one, could be a very aggressive schedule. So that'll be tough. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's, it'll be a lot in the next six months. Um, okay. So for the last few months, we have been talking about finalize your rotations, get your research figured out, finalize that. So do students still have time? What What should they be doing for rotations if they haven't done any yet? So that's a that's a good point. Um, you know, April, May, June, uh, three months are still when uh, the physicians, the preceptors have a lot of spots available. And, uh, you know, in general, these are good months to do rotation, to get familiarized with the U.S. healthcare system and build that, uh, you know, rapport with the with the preceptor. So uh, now is the time to finalize those plans and get started especially because there are a lot of rotations where you can rotate hopefully create a good impression and match a lot of our students do uh, rotate at programs where they eventually match so whether it's saint mary's in new jersey we've had matches there uh beaumont which is now known as corwell we've had uh, matches there so there are rotations that uh, you can do through sarthi uh, maybe with program director, maybe with senior attendings at some of these programs. Uh, Hackensack Palisades, as all of you know, we work closely with that program for both research and rotation. So some of these programs, if you do early enough, you have more exposure to the patients, 
uh, more time to uh, you know work with the senior attendings or residents. University of Texas, we have a very senior attending uh, that you can work with Stony Brook completely in patient rotation. So some of these rotations uh, get filled up and uh, August, September may be a bit tight. So if you can do it now, I think that'll be a, a good time from April through June. Uh, and of course, uh, if you want to start research, uh, maybe we'll come to that in a minute and, and research. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, rotations, uh, I, I think would be a good time to uh, from April to June to get it done. Yeah, and most of those rotations are available still for, for those months. So I would say now's a great time. Um, so then to go along with rotations, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, how do we how do we impress the PDs or those who we're rotating with if we're, you know, there's lots of students that are they're gonna be seeing. So how can we stand out and and do well on the letters of recommendation? Yeah, so I, I think if as long as you do the basics right, you should all be fine. So for example, read the cases a night before, a day before. Always a good idea. You know, go prepared. Uh, always be there first thing, you know, come early uh, and leave late. That's the uh, the general rule. Uh, be respectful to your peers, to the attendings, to the patients. Uh, understand how the U.S. healthcare system um, is different or similar to your home country. Uh, knowledge of EMR always helps. Uh, some of the things may be very basic. Uh, but general hygiene always matters. Uh, you know, those kind of things. Be ready to present always. Uh, you know, take those initiative presentations, case presentations are always uh, very appreciated here. And uh, if you have uh, some of these done, I, I think uh, that can help you stand apart from the crowd. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, uh, basic common sense will get you through. Yeah, we talk a lot about kind of the balance between being respectful and humble, but also confident in your knowledge and your skills. So that's, yeah, definitely something to work on. Absolutely. Um, okay, so then uh, research was the other piece that we were talking about. So is there still time at this point to still get publications? Should students be worrying about research still? Yeah, so depending on the profile, research can really, really add a lot to your, uh, you know, strengths and uh, make you a better fit for the match. As you and I uh, talk with uh, the students each day, uh, many students with uh, probably lower scores do need research. Now, the question is on-site research versus online research and some of these courses. On-site full-time research helps. So if you do it, say, as a research fellow, research associate with some of these uh, top programs like Hopkins or Harvard or Cleveland Clinic, always help. But it does take three to four months for the visa and other processes to go through. So you cannot put all your eggs in, in the on-site full-time research. If it works out, uh, that's great. Uh, we do have classes around it on how to look for research positions what exactly you should be doing, how to prepare for the interview if you get one. And we do have, uh, you know, sometimes positions we know of and we let our students know. So if you're a Sarthi student, uh, we can definitely help you get uh, these uh, positions. And then the other part is the online research courses. So uh, like we at Sarthi also do online research. So uh, you know, director of clinical research at Hackensack, Dr. Weissman leads our research courses. Uh, it's a great time to start because he works on a lot of research. He's very prolific. So in a classroom kind of a setting, whether it's the manuscript you're working towards or abstract, uh, you can definitely get it submitted before the September deadline. Publication timeline depends on the journal. So in some journals, uh, it can still be published uh, before uh, September, but in some, you know, it'll be submitted, it'll be accepted. Uh, publication may still take time. So yeah, uh, it is. you still have time uh, that uh, you can start on your research initiatives. And they can still put uh, submitted publications on their CV, right? 
Yes, submitted and accepted are still considered your research output. So absolutely, yes. Great, awesome. Okay, thanks for walking us through that. Um, I, that's pretty much our April recommendations at this point. Do you have anything you wanted to add for us? No, that was all I think for April. Uh, like I said, if you didn't match in March, uh, you know, pick yourself up and get ready. There are six or less months left, so. Great, and I just wanted to remind everyone to make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We've put out a lot of webinars from our past students that have matched. Um, a lot of our students this year had, you know, the old YOGs, the red flags, gaps, and they talked about their tips and what they did. So those are really, really awesome, insightful videos. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much, Shayla, for doing this, as always. Of course, thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.